Hi everyone, this is Miss Tiki from the Fairfield County District Library. Um, welcome to our summer reading program, Tales and Tales. And I thought it would be perfect to come here um, to the Humane Society here in, in Lancaster. And I've got someone featured right here. This is Dakota. And she's looking for a forever home. But anyway, we're going to be talking today um, with Mr. Corey. And we're going to talk to him and ask him, why are these animals out here, for one thing? And what are some ways that you and I can help the um, Humane Society? And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to go in and after we um, ask Mr. Corey some questions, then we're going to um, take a little tour and you guys can see some of the um, animals that are up for adoption. All right? Okay, so we're inside the um, Fairfield Area Humane Society and we're talking to um, Mr. Corey, the Executive Director of the Humane Society and it's located at 1721 Granville Pike. And so we're here today um, to ask some questions. Why, why are the animals here at the shelter? Uh, it's a good question and I can answer it a, a few different ways. So um, I, I think the biggest um, thing to, to get across so that the Humane Society, although we have many functions and we offer a lot of different services in these days, Humane Societies were started to um, protect companion animals from cruelty and neglect. So uh, one of our biggest functions that not a lot of people see unless it happens in the news um, is we handle all the cruelty and neglect cases in Fairfield County. So uh, as part of that, um, you know, we have some animals that come in from abandonment situations um, or we, you know, we have humane officers that we might have to um, seize animals from a bad situation. Um, we get our animals from uh, owner surrenders where maybe a family's circumstances have changed and um, we can't keep them anymore. Um, and then um, we also take care of a lot of, um, we, we help a lot of other places. Maybe, if, if, you know, communities that maybe they have a lot of stray dogs and don't have as many adopters or families available. Mm -hmm. um, so we transfer dogs in from different counties. Um, so we usually have 100 animals at a time here. Yeah. So what are their, um, what can kids and parents do to help the situation? Um, Education is a huge piece, and, I, and that's why you're here, and that's why I like talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, our mission, connecting animals and community through adoption, rescue, and education, I mean, we put the education piece on our mission statement um, because that's important. So I think for, for parents, it's, it's really teaching your kids about the responsibilities of animal ownership um, and, and even going as far as why it's important to spay and neuter your animals. So overcrowding in shelters, and shelters exist because there's a lot of times too many animals. Um, so spaying and neutering is a big focus for us. Uh, we offer those services. Um, we make sure all of our animals are fixed before they leave. Um, so I, I really think it's important. So like we have people come in all the time and maybe you've brought your kids in and the kids are whining like, hey mom, I want to take home a cat or a kitten or a puppy. Um, those situations are a perfect opportunity to explain what it takes. You know, the dog needs fed, the dog needs watered, it needs to go outside, it needs to have exercise. Um, so I think those are what's, what's really important to, to get out to the community and to pass along to, to your kids or to their friends. And then, you know, really uh, another help from our aspect is we're a private nonprofit. Um, we, everything we do here functions and runs on donations and support from the community. So whether it's volunteering your time or donating supplies to help us. 
So what are some ways that the kids could volunteer? Most of them, because this is a school age program, so most of them, their parents are going, our guardians going to have to drive them here. Right. But what could they do? So our our volunteer program, we have an orientation the first Saturday of every month, um, where you come, you kind of get the tour. Um, we show everyone, you know, the dog walking and and all of that. So we have. We don't really have a set schedule for volunteers, but because we want you to be able to come out when you're available. Right. And a lot of times that's coming out and socializing with the cats or walking the dogs or, you know, sometimes, you know, we have people come in on Saturdays to help us wash dishes. Right. That type of stuff. So they could come in and even just the pet the dogs or, or cat, brother, they could come in and just walk them. They could even read a book. Exactly. Yeah. 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 We used to have a program. Um, really? Where you could come read to the dogs, um, it was super popular. Um, we we don't really have it set up and organized like we used to, but yeah, the dogs. You know, when you, when, when you're here and in a kennel all day, you know they love to get out and play. Uh, they do. There's quite a few of them that will always sit and listen to you read. So I, I think that's an awesome thing, and I, I I wouldn't mind letting people do that anytime that we're open. Great, great. Yeah. And was there, what other animals have come in to the Humane Society besides cats and dogs? Um, so, every so often you'll see us have, we just had a couple rabbits available for adoption that already went home. Mm -hmm. um, we've had ferrets in here, um, snakes, um, but we, you know, as far as what animals we deal with, we've, we, we check on, so... All of those investigations that we do do involve horses, cows. Right. Um, we've gotten, um, we've dealt with an alligator before. Oh. Um, so <laughs> it's a little more than just just cats and kittens, but that's mainly, um, you know, cats and dogs are mainly what we have here. Right. And one thing I was thinking too, puppies and kittens are so cute, but don't forget the older, the older ones. They're they're more calm and gentle and so if you don't want that rambunctiousness of a, a kitten or a puppy don't rule out the older the older animals and I, yes and I, I think that's a, a great point and it's also important to think so we have an adoption and application and a process to go through and we want to make sure that we're pairing our animals with the right homes in the right situation yeah. so um, back here yeah exactly and um maybe yeah maybe your home is maybe not suited for puppy and kitten and um, an older relaxed dog and, and cat would be great so absolutely All right. but there's um as far as donations on your website you have a list of things that you need the most yeah absolutely so even if you can't adopt maybe you could foster do you, do you foster here? we have we have a kitten foster program um that's really important it helps us i think we've had 300 kittens go through our foster program this year um so that's kind of a nice program to where Maybe your kids want to get involved, but you want the long time commitment right. of a cat you know, or, a, or a cat. So, yeah. uh, the kitten foster program is really important for us. But yeah, there's a list on the website that you guys can go to um, because they need all kinds of things here. And foster. Yeah, so if you can't adopt or foster, you can come and volunteer, do things, you can donate. A lot of kids, um, can you say something about birthdays? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know if it's just my kids, but my kids don't really seem to want for anything. Right. So it's like when birthdays come around, um, you know, they don't really need anything. So you see a lot of um, a lot of families that instead of birthday gifts, they ask for donations to the Humane Society. And then kids have a great time bringing in all those supplies that they've collected for their birthday. So that's a great opportunity. But I think really even even word of mouth is important for us. So as a nonprofit and, you know, not a huge marketing budget, even our Facebook page, sharing our posts about maybe what we need or what's available for adoption. It, it's super helpful for us, and, and believe it or not, you sharing our posts or liking our page helps us greatly.
I was just wondering, could, is there any way that we could maybe um, take a tour and see some of the, um, yeah. the yeah. animals up for adoption? That'd be great. Yep, yeah, we have plenty of cats and kittens and some excitable dogs. Uh, okay, for you to we've see. been hearing them. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's go do that. and cats out there they they look like they needed something to do so I thought we can make toys for them and so in your July bag you had um, some instructions on how to make a braided t-shirt toy so what I did I've taken two different t-shirts of different colors because I wanted it to look pretty so what you're going to do is you're going to take three strips and it tells you in your instructions how to do it and so what you want to do is bring them together and then you're going to make a knot so just loop it around and make your knot pull it through and then make it really tight okay and then what you're going to want to do because unless you have someone that wants to hold the end that's knotted otherwise you're going to have to tape it down because it is hard to braid it because you're going to be braiding it so what i'll do is i'm just going to tape it but if you have someone like a sibling or one of your parents <clears throat> they could hold that end while you braid it now i'm sure some of the girls that have long hair, they probably know how to braid. But maybe the boys or somebody that has shorter hair, we don't know how to braid. So what you do is you're just gonna crisscross one over the other, just back and forth. Can you see that? See how I'm doing it? Just over and over. <clears throat> and you can make it tighter because you want it kind of tight. Just tighten it up a little bit and then just continue to do that till it's nice and tight and then leave room because you're going to want to tie the end up just like you did at the beginning there and make it tight and there you have it. And if you have a cat, 
you'll maybe only want half of that size. But you can make as many as you want. And if you make, you can make these and take them to the Humane Society and then they would have a toy to play with. And don't forget your own fur babies at home because they want something to play with too. And also, don't forget that we have many books here at the library that talks about caring for pets. You know, if you decide you are gonna be getting a pet or you can come to the library and we have lots of books, okay? All right, and also, if you do make one of these and if you wanna show us online, you can go to take a picture and send it into the uh, Facebook or email and it's in your packet, I believe. Yeah, the link is in the packet. So, and then we'd like to see your, what colors you made. Could just be all one color, I don't know. All right, well, we hope to see you soon at the library. Bye-bye.